Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet part three of the Market Day Cardigan, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. This pattern is being presented as a crochet along, which means parts one and two are already up. Today, in part three, we're adding the shawl collar and the bottom hem, which will finish up our Market Day Cardigan, and after today, we'll be all done. To make this pattern, I used Red Heart All-in-One Granny Square Yarn, which allows you to make a five color, five round granny square with only two ends for each square to weave in. You can use another yarn if you'd like, just make sure that you're getting a six round, or excuse me, a six inch granny square in five rounds. In addition to the yarn, we used a USH five millimeter crochet hook, but the most important thing is that you use the crochet hook that helps you use your yarn Again, to get that six inch square after five rounds of the granny square. So I found that I had to go down a size from the hook recommended on the label. So you should definitely measure your squares and see which hook works best for you. If you need more help getting those granny squares made with this yarn, please go back and refer to part one of this crochet along, which is all about getting perfect granny squares with Red Heart all-in-one granny square yarn. In addition to the hook and yarn, of course, we'll need our standard crochet supplies like scissors and a yarn needle. And for this part, we'll really want to have a couple of those stitch markers handy as well. But one thing before we get started with part three is that I've had a lot of requests for how to make this sweater longer. So let's take a quick moment to talk about how to make this sweater longer, which you'll want to do before you finish up part two and move on to this video with part three. So here's how to add more squares to make your market day cardigan longer. Again, this is something you're going to want to do before you add the edging at the end of part two, when you're still adding squares to your cardigan. If you'll recall in part two, there's a step where we can stop and try it on. So we do that before the edging and that's the same step where you can try it on and add more squares if you'd like. Now, if you look at this drawing in front of you right here, this is included in the written pattern. What we do to make it longer is we add the same number of columns to each side of the top two rows. If we see the gray kind of T-shape here, this is our base sweater. Whatever size you're making is represented by the gray here. So this kind of represents all three sizes. No matter what size you're making, to make it bigger, you add columns of squares to the top two rows. And then however many columns there are, you can see here there's two. It could be three, four, five. Each column is going to add six inches because remember there's six inch squares. So however many columns you add, you need to add that same number of rows to the bottom of that T right there. So here again, you can see there's two columns on each side. We've got two rows. If I add four columns, I would need to do that on both sides and add four rows to the bottom. And the reason we do that is because how it comes together. Now, again, if you went refer to part two, there's this point where we can stop and try it on. And what we do is we connect this little corner right here with this little corner right here. These are our armholes right here and right here. We'll see those again later in a later schematic as well. But for adding the length, what you'll want to do is add those columns and rows. And then after you do your edging and before you do your final hem, you'll probably, depending on how many squares you've added, want to do some seaming. So you'll want to leave the top two squares and these two squares unsewn because again, these become the armholes, but any squares you add here along this edge will get sewn along this side edge. And any squares you add here along this edge get sewn to this side edge. We bring these two arrows together and these two arrows together to create our shape for our cardigan. So it's like I say, it's actually really simple to add length to this and each column or row will add six inches to the length. Then, like I say, you'll probably wanna do some seaming, leave those armholes open, and then you can just go right to that hem, the shawl collar and the hem as instructed. Um, if you'd like to move the stitch markers for your shawl collar, again, something we'll talk about here a little bit later, um, then you can certainly do that and adjust those for the look you're looking for. Otherwise, you can just follow the rest of the instructions as written. So assuming we've got all our squares sewn together and we've finished the edging like we did at the end of part two, we're finally ready to begin part three, adding the collar and hem. Now this is going to differ a little bit if you're right-handed and left-handed. So here, as you can see, 
in the written pattern, there are two different versions of this schematic. So you can refer to it, whether you're right-handed or left-handed. This will show the direction of work as you work around your T-shape. Again, that T-shape we have represented here. So you can see here, if you're right-handed, when you finished up working around, you'll be where this red dot is. Then we'll work across the top to make our collar. We'll have some increasing, work even, do some decreasing, work even again. And then our hem will go across that little bit of the collar there, across these two squares. Then we'll jump and go across that bottom row, then jump again, go up these two squares, and right up that little bit of that row one of the collar, right where we started. Then we can work back and forth here in rows to make that final hem. This will leave these two sections here open for those armholes that I was talking about just a moment ago. And those are already edged when we did our big edging around uh, at the end of part two. So we don't have to do anything else with those. After we've worked in back and forth in rows to make our hem, we're all done with our cardigan. Left-handed, same thing. It's just that you ended up over here on the left for your last stitch at the end of part two. So you'll move the opposite direction. Coming across the top this way, we've got our increasing, work even, decreasing, working even again, and then our hem will go across that last row of the collar, down the sides of those two squares, jump to the bottom of our T-shape, up the side of the other side, and finally along that last bit of the collar right there. So let's go ahead and do that together. So here I have three of my practice squares just kind of sewn together to create sort of a facsimile of that T-shape for our sweater. So we can use this for our little demo piece. You can see here I've ended up right in that corner. So now we're ready to begin our shawl collar. But you'll remember at the very end of part two, we needed to put in two stitch markers right along that top row. We wanted to count in 44 stitches from the first side, kind of the side we ended at. And obviously I don't have that many stitches here, so I'm just kind of gonna arbitrarily pick one. I'll let you do the counting, count in 44 this way. And then of course, our other stitch marker comes in 69 stitches from this side. So this one will be in a little bit further than this one, approximately one square's width. So if you are making the longer shawl, uh, excuse me, the longer sweater, and you do wish to have that collar sort of flare out um, in a different spot, not as close to the bottom of the sweater, then you can adjust those. But you'll, like I say, just kind of eyeball it, the increasing and decreasing to create that shape, take about one square's width. So you can use that to indicate where you're putting your stitch markers. We use the first stitch marker to indicate where we start increasing, and then the second, second stitch marker to indicate where we start decreasing, which is why it's in a little bit further. So that's why those numbers are a little different coming in from those sides. Again, if you want to adjust those, you can. It's just where we start and then where we begin to decrease for our shawl collar. So once you've got that all set up, we're ready to start making the shawl collar worked right along this longest top edge. So let's begin. We're going to start by chaining 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13. Now this is going to basically create the width of that ribbing that starts running up the side. So if you prefer a really short ribbing or if you'd like something a little wider, you can go ahead and add or subtract stitches at this point. It really doesn't matter. Um, there's no particular stitch count needed. It's just however wide you would like that ribbing to be. So after we've chained 13, what we want to do is skip the chain closest to the hook. We'll count that as our turning chain and then work a back loop only single crochet in each remaining chain across. So let's do that together. I've got my chain closest to the hook right there. There's the next chain. We're going to go under the back loop only. So that's the, if we look at the top two loops of the chain, we want the one that's furthest away from us, sort of heading up towards the body of the sweater here along the sweater, that direction. So we just work right under that back loop only and make a single crochet. And we do that in each stitch across. Remember back loop only and front loop only are always relative to you, the crocheter. So you just have to kind of look at it and straighten it out and turn it in the direction of your work to see which one is the front loop and which one is the back loop. If you have trouble finding those on the chain, just look for those top V's just like you see at the top of a standard crochet stitch. Oops, I 
does, you can see it does want to curl up on me here, but don't worry, that will straighten out once we get a couple of rows into it. So I'm just taking my time and working a single crochet in each one of those stitches here in the back loop only until we get right back down to our chain space here where we ended up. Alrighty, let's see. Did I get 12 made? Because we chained 13, we skipped the one closest to the hook. We should have 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Alrighty. So then what we want to do is we're going to come right back here. And this is our edging. Remember, we worked that row of single crochet edging all the way around our T at the end of part two. So this is the edging then that we're referring to in here in part three while we're making this collar. So we start looking at this edging. We find our first two stitches and we're going to do a slip stitch two together. So we go into the first stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop. Go into the second stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then you can just pull that last loop through all three, just like that. Now that we've worked back down our row of chains, we need to anchor to this edging. So what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch two together in these first two stitches. Insert your hook in the first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Insert your hook in the second stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then you can pull this loop through the other two loops. And now we have anchored this row back to our edging. That is what it should look like at the end here of row one of your shawl collar. So now we're ready to make row two. Of course, we need to turn. You can see I've still got my little ends sticking out there. I usually do that on um, the full size sweaters I'm making as well, because it always lets me know at a glance which one's the inside and the outside, and I don't get mixed up. And then I leave those in when I'm all done. All right, so we've turned our work and we're ready to work back across the previous row. We're going to skip that slip stitch right there. You can see right there, kind of looks almost like we've chained one, but it's attached to our fabric. We aren't going to chain one and we aren't going to work into that slip stitch two together. Instead, we're going to jump right over here to that last single crochet we made in the previous row. And once again, we're going to back loop only single crochet across. So we want to find that one right there and put our back loop only single crochet in it. Now, if you have trouble finding that stitch, it can be really helpful to keep a stitch marker in that stitch. Um, that way, you know, you'll just always find it and it won't get tucked up along with the other stitches here along the side. Sometimes it can just be a little bit hard to find, especially if you aren't familiar with this technique. I'm a big fan of using stitch markers. They, you know, just help make things a little bit easier, kind of are an extra set of eyes, a little extra bit of brain, and uh, prevents a little bit more of the frogging you might have to do later. So I am just, again, back loop only, single crocheting my way across this row, like so. Again, we should have 12 of these back loop only single crochets. That should be our last one right there. And you can see how working in the back loop only is giving us this really great texture. And that's what's going to create this ribbing. So that is what it should look like at the end of two rows of your shawl collar. So to begin row three of our shawl collar, I'm going to chain one and turn, or you can turn and chain one, whichever you prefer. It is all straightened out here. so We can make sure we're working across our previous row. Now we've got our chain one, that's our turning chain. So we won't work into it. We simply back loop only, single crochet, back across those 12 stitches. Just like we did before. Again, you can always count your stitches, make sure that you're not losing one somewhere. It's very easy to do. I've been using this ribbing style for many, many years now. It's absolutely one of my favorites. Um, but you know, even I once in a while will go back and count and realize somewhere I missed a stitch. Um, whether at the beginning of, you know, row two or at the end of row three, somewhere I missed one and I have to go back and put that stitch back in. So just every once in a while, if you're not using the stitch markers, and even if you are, it's not a bad idea to stop and count and make sure that you're getting all 12 of these stitches across. Because with these anchoring stitches that we're working to the edging, it can be a little confusing. So let's count these together. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And yep, I need one more right there, right back by that slip stitch. That's what I mean by making sure you get that last one. It really likes to hide. There we are. We've got our 12 single crochets made. So to finish off row three, we need to come back to that edging row, find the next stitch, the next one we haven't worked into, yarn over and pull up a loop, 
go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then pull that last loop through the other two for our slip stitch two together. So there we are with three rows done of our ribbed collar. So here is the finished sweater. And you can see right there, I finished my edging in part two, chained 13. You can actually see there's a bit of that color break there, chained my 13 and started working back and forth in rows. All we do here is repeat rows two and three. So when we're coming this way, we skip the slip stitch two together and single crochet in the back loop across. When we're coming back this way, we need to chain one at this edge and then work back across, making sure to do that slip stitch two together to anchor right back into that edging. So we just continue working even those 12 stitches back and forth in rows until, let me straighten it out here, we get up to that first stitch marker right around stitch 44 here. You should have a mark. It should be right around the end of one of your squares. That makes it really easy to notice. And here too, you can see how those increases take up maybe just over one square's width of rows. So that will help you if you decide you'd like to change where this collar increases and decreases. If you're a more advanced crocheter and you'd like to personalize this a little bit more, you can sort of use those to help you gauge where you want to put those stitch markers. So when you get to that first stitch marker here, again, probably around row 44, you want to make sure that you finish off your work even rows on a row to repeat. So that's one of the rows where you will have skipped the slip stitches, back loop only, single crochet across. So you'll want to end up at this end before you begin your increase rows. So when you get to that 44th stitch marker, if you need to work another row to end up here on the outside of your collar, that's absolutely fine. Once you're on this outside and you've got that stitch marker right about here somewhere, then it's time to begin those increase rows. To begin our increase rows, we start again with a chain one. And of course, we want to be working back towards the sweater in this direction. And to increase, we simply work two back loop only single crochets in the first stitch of this row. So again, we want to make sure we go into that back loop, split the stitch, put in one single crochet, and then a second single crochet. After that, we just back loop only, single crochet across, just like we were doing before. And of course, put our slip stitch two together anchor stitch in the next two stitches of the edging. So row one of our edging, we have two single crochets in the first stitch and then work back across the rest of the row as normal. Row two of our increase rows are worked just as we were doing before. We do not increase in row two of our increase rows. So basically we're increasing every other row here until we've gone from 12 stitches to 26 stitches. So as soon as you hit 26 stitches, excuse me, then it's time to start working evenly again for our collar. Now with the numbers given, this section is about three inches wide, give or take. And this section is about seven inches wide, give or take. Again, you can alter these numbers. It doesn't need to be a particular number. It's whatever you like. If you want to make your collar wider, if you prefer a straight collar all along, or maybe a great big collar all along, whatever you'd like to do, it really is up to you. And here's a great spot to, again, customize your cardigan. So, as I say, we work even 26 stitches a row until we get to that second stitch marker around stitch number 69 or wherever you've moved it to. Then we're ready to begin our decrease rows, which will bring us back down to 12 stitches. Now at the end of these work even rows, before you begin the decrease rows, you again want to make sure that you finish with that rep round two or rather row two repeat so that you have your hook here on the outside of your sweater at the end of the collar. Then we can begin our decrease rows. I've got my chain one already made and instead of working a back loop only in this first stitch or two back loop onlys in that first stitch, we're going to back loop only two together, single crochet two together that is. So we go into that first stitch back loop only, yarn over and pull up a loop, go into the next stitch, back loop only, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. After that, just like when we were increasing, it's back to the standard, when, as just like when we were working even. Single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch across, work your slip stitch two together here, and then remember when you're working this way, you work even, when you're working this way, you decrease. Keep decreasing every other row until you're back to 12 stitches across. Once you get back to 12 stitches across, then you can simply continue working even. So here you can see where we've decreased back down to 12 stitches and we go back to working even until we hit 
this other corner right here of our sweater. Again, we want to make sure that we end on a row to repeat where we've got our um, hook right here on the outside of our collar. So we're all set up to begin our hem. Now, at this point, when you've gotten to kind of this row right here and your hook's hanging out right here with your active loop, this is going to be your last chance to stop and block your sweater laid flat. You can see right now it would still be making a T-shape. We haven't connected anything through the hem. So you want to leave your yarn connected, but if you want to take one more opportunity to lay your sweater out and get it nice and blocked before you do those final few rows, this is your chance to do that. You can see a photo of that, how I did that, in the written pattern. Again, once you've got that all set up, then we're ready to make our final hem. So let's come back to our schematic. You can see here, we've worked across the top of our T to make that collar. We've gotten to that corner right there. So this is where we begin making that hem. We finished on a row two rep and we're ready to work back across here. So we'd work down the sides of these two rows, skip, of course this one isn't quite, you know, to, to scale, but bear with me here, work down the sides of these two rows and then we jump to the bottom here and then we jump back to the sides of the two rows here at the top. So when you fold it, If I take it like this, it's essentially going to fold like this so that we have our armholes here and we can work across the sides, across the bottom and up the other sides. Let's take another look at that on the finished cardigan. So let's look at this again, as I said, on the finished cardigan. You can see here we've worked across the very top row or the very top section of our T to make the collar. And now we're on the outside, we can turn and back loop only single crochet across that last row of the collar, across the ends of those top two rows, then just go straight from that last stitch there along the side to the bottom. Here is our bottom row at the bottom of our T and we back loop only. You can actually see the ridge there a little bit. We back loop only single crochet all the way across that bottom row. And then we just jump right on over to the side of those top two rows. You can see here, if I kind of straighten it out. Once it's attached, it's harder to see, but you can kind of see here if I straighten it out, then we're able to work along the side of those top two rows right here. And then right across row one of our shawl collar. You can see right there is where we started and took off. When we finish up, we'll end up working right back across the bottom of row one. Then we simply chain one, turn, and back loop only, single crochet, back and forth for several rows. I made 13 rows total for the bottom hem, again, to sort of get the same width here at the bottom that I had right here in this section along the sides of the front. Again, however, you can, of course, make this shorter, make it longer, add more rows, take some away. However wide you would like that final hem to be is however many rows you can add. So with that, once you have finished your hem rows, you simply break your yarn, go ahead and weave in the rest of those ends and your sweater is all finished. You can see here's the side of those top two rows coming down to meet that bottom row for our hem. It really all comes together in that first row of the hem. Now delightfully, our armholes here are already edged. That single crochet edging we did at the end of part two has that completely taken care of. And really, once you make that last row, that's one of the great things about this sweater, it really is all finished. You can see here, we've got our beautiful fold over shawl collar. Again, if you wanna adjust those stitch markers, you can do that about a square's width will help you eyeball that. And you can make that start or begin wherever on your sweater you'd like. We've got this really interesting shoulder construction here, which I think makes it just really cozy and really easy to wear and such a great garment for anybody who's new to making garments or the granny square. You can have a lot of success, and I think the way this one folds together at the end just makes it that much more interesting. And that's how to crochet the Market Day Cardigan. Once again, you'll find all the parts for this free crochet pattern on mooglyblog.com, including written pattern and video tutorials in right and left-handed. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.